I don't know, sometime like 3.30 or 4 in the morning on Saturday, on Sunday, I guess it would have been. So uh, tried to give the guys a little chance to sleep and then got them over here and, and kind of went through everything we had to go through. And um, today's their day off, so we will we will have a game plan ready for them tomorrow. And we got a great opportunity. We're coming home. Um, we really need to to go back and double down on assignments, fundamentals, um, you know, even some of those special plays that we ran. Now, those don't happen by accident. We started doing those on Sunday night. Every day we did them. It's, everything's about execution. And when you, when you go through the tape, you know, some of our errors – are forced errors. That's a very good team we played. And some of our errors are unforced errors. The unforced errors, we have to, we have to nip those out. We got to get them out. And the forced ones, you know, that's, that's why it's a competition. So that's our goal. We're going to double down, make sure that, uh, that we're sure on every one of our assignments and that we are continuing to get better at our fundamentals. That's, that's our focus. We got, uh, like I said, a great opportunity coming home this week. Questions? We'll take our first question from Keith Sargent, NJ.com. Greg, I know you're uh, pretty much in a bunker this time of year, but uh, Rutgers has gotten a lot of uh, praise uh, for, on a national level, whether it's Big Ten Network or a lot of uh, you know uh, college uh, football people around the country have kind of taken notice for, of what you've done. Two-parter on that is, one, have you noticed that anything stand out as far as some of the uh, buzz that you've received? And two, two Maybe how does it help um, from a recruiting perspective, you know, from the coaches or the recruits that you're able to, to, to talk to uh, this time of year? Well, the first, first part of your question, I really, I, I do live in a bunker a little bit, uh, more, more so than ever really nowadays. So um, not 100% sure what you're saying. I, I think our guys played hard. But, uh, you know, we, I want it to be very clear. We went out there 100% believing we are going to win the game and we didn't. So, as I told you last week, when you lose, it's really hard because you put so much. Every game is a one-game season, and I know people think that's coach speak. Well, it's not coach speak. It's from we got back at three thirty. From that point forward, and even before that, really, on the plane ride home, you're you're watching your previous game that you just played to uh, to make the corrections and get moving, and um, you put so much into it from. Saturday to the following Saturday that when you lose, it's just, it crushes you. And um, that's where we are now. So I, I'm not sure about all that other stuff. I am sure that our guys are working hard. And I, 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 I do tip my hat for that. But everybody in the Big Ten works hard. Like, that's the league we're in. We're in the, we're in the league. And for us to to be competitive and win games in, in the big 10 conference, we're going to have to do special things. Um, and that's hard work and that's focus. And that's all the things that, uh, that we talk about here. So I'm not sure if it helps in recruiting or doesn't help in recruiting right now. We have uh, a great class that we're, we're going to sign here in about 40 days. And then uh, we're already recruiting the next class. So, Recruiting, as you know, Keith, is a 24-7 deal. It doesn't stop ever. So we're just, you know, going to continue doing what we do. It sure helps when you win, though. You know, everybody likes a winner more. So that's that's our goal, to win. That's what we're going to try to do. We're going to go to Chris Eisman with we'll Gannett. Hey, Greg, I know, uh, you know, before the season started, obviously you said that you were impressed by the way the quarterbacks, all the quarterbacks handled the competition and supported each other. Now that we're three games into the season, what have you seen from those guys in terms of how they've continued to handle the situation and, and kind of stayed ready from game to game? I really am impressed. I think that um, they continue to support each other. They're a very close room. Uh, I think Sean's done a really good job of keeping them all involved um, in different ways. And, um, you know, even our, our youngest guy, our freshman, we, we got to go out and, and, I don't know, 30 play scrimmage last night with the young guys. So it's great to watch him play. So I think, I think what we need to do is develop players at every position. 
certainly that's important at the quarterback, right? It may be the most important position on the team. It probably is. But um, programmatically, we think that's critical, that everybody has a role. And as I tell the players, you don't have to like your role, but you have to embrace it today, knowing that it could change in two hours, or it might not, right? But you have to embrace it because every guy on this team contributes to us being successful. And that's really, you know, I think it's easy to say that. It's harder to do, right? Everybody wants what they want. But uh, that's kind of what our whole culture is built on is forget about me. You know, it's about the team. So Bobby Darren, 24-7. Greg, I just wanted to ask you about uh, Illinois. I know they haven't won a game, but what challenges do they present to you, and how do you kind of keep your guys level-headed going up against a team that hasn't won a game? Well, I think it starts with their head coach. Um, you know, you're talking about one of the most experienced coaches in America. Uh, has coached in the Super Bowl, pro coach for many years. So he'll have that program and that team ready to go. Um, you know, as you know, they've been stricken. The, the virus has really had an effect on their team. They're a team that went to a bowl game last year and really was was really cooking. And then something like that pops up. How do you how do you ever handle that? Right, you lose a lot of good players, starters. Um, but Coach Smith is is as good as there is in the game. And you know the thing that jumps out at you on the tape is they play really hard, and they're the best ball disruption team that that I've seen in a long time. Every single guy on that field on that defense goes after the football. And whether it's in the running back's hands, the receiver's hands, the quarterback's hands, they do things to disrupt the ball. And we're going to have to be really, really sure-handed and really, really get the ball where it's supposed to be because it's not like there's one or two hit men that do it. It's every guy on the defense does it. Every guy in special teams does it. Um, you know, their special teams is really good. Bob Lugashevsky is one of the best, and uh, he does it for them. He's, he's outstanding. Um, I think it's a really well-coached team. They've been hit with this bug, you know, this virus, but, uh, you know, they're, they're going to have that team ready to play, and it's, it's going to be a very well-coached team that plays very hard. So we've got our hands full. We'll go to James Cratch, NJ.com. Greg, I'm just curious, how do you – and you say hey, every game is a one-game season, but how does it change for you as a coach when people are going to expect you guys to win on Saturday? And they're going to look and see that Michigan and Penn State are one in five, and they're going to have higher expectations for Rutgers uh, that they've had in years. How do you kind of handle that with the team? Well, that's the in essence why, as a coach, you you do it that way. You know, on everything we got, you know, people, even like some of my own family members. Well, that's good. You used all the, those special plays, but now do you have any left? Right. Well, to me, it's a one game season. Like you do everything you can to win that game. And then you hit reset and you start over. And if you can get your whole organization to live that way, think that way, really do it, then that gives you a fighting chance, right? What you just mentioned about other people's records and everything going on in the league, it means absolutely nothing to the result on Saturday. It can't. Everything has to be focused on our preparation to go out and play the best we can play against Illinois. And that's how we approach it. Period. And um, I know on the outside you can say, well, it's coach speak, but I don't know. I'm a coach. Yeah. So, like, that's what I speak because that's, in my mind, that's what works. And when you let yourself get ahead of yourself or you let your thoughts go to something other than exactly what it is, today is Monday, rest and recovery, study tape on their own, take care of their academics. Right. I mean, this is a team that we had the best academic record we've had here in the history of the game last spring. We did very well this this summer. Can we do it? Can we do it three sessions in a row? That's that's what I want to see. Can we become a consistent program in every area? We're not there by any means, but that's the goal, right? So on the field, off the field, everything we do. And if it, if you don't have that kind of focus, I think you you really put yourself in harm's way. So. I know, Coach Speak, I get it. I, it's guilty. Tom Canavan with the AP. Hey, Greg. Most of my questions have been asked already, but uh, kind of on a different light. I mean, with Rutgers basketball being ranked today in the preseason poll, does that help you? 
Well, I think I think it does a lot. Um, as you remember, when we when we first got hired, we had a couple events where we brought recruits to the basketball game. I mean, you talk about uh, an environment. I mean, you know, that's one of the top five in the country, right? And we have our recruits sitting in there, and they're looking to their left, and there's the student section going crazy. And those are going to be your classmates right there. Um, and they're, they're fanatical about what's happening on the, on the court. And those are the same guys that will be sitting and gals that will be sitting in the, in the end zone in the student section. Now, this virus is throwing everything out of whack. I know that. But that's huge for us. And, and we can be equally big for them if we can get it going, if we can mirror their, their path. You know, I think great athletic programs feed on each other. And, you know, in this day and age of – Every game's on TV, right? If, if you want to watch a game, you can watch it. And it's on their phones. Kids can watch it anywhere they want. When Rutgers brand, when that block R is out there and it's having success throughout the year, that's great for everybody. And it's certainly great for recruiting. And that's what we need to do. We need to make sure we recruit the best and keep the best here right? in, in our area. That's how you build a program. And we're, we're going to do that. And basketball's already been a big help, but they'll continue to be – I'm a big fan. I love the way our basketball team plays. I mean, they're tough. They're focused. They're intense. Uh, I think Coach Peichel is is an unbelievable coach, and I can't wait to get over. I wish we had a bye week because usually in a bye week I go watch either Vivian or, or the men's team practice. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. Maybe some Monday I will. But um, I think they really they go about it the right way. So excited for, for them. I, again, I live in my cave. When is the first game? December, something. December. We don't have a schedule yet. Oh, we don't. That sounds, that sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Unless Tom has an advanced tip on it, uh, I don't think we have one yet. Um, next question, Bruce Beck, NBC. Hey, Greg, uh, what have you learned about your team thus far in a off season like none other, in a season like none other? By the way, that's broadcaster speak. No, but it's, it's, I think it's, Bruce, I think it's a good question because it's nothing like I've ever seen 32 years of doing this. I've never, I've never been a part of anything like this. Um, as bad as the virus has been for our whole world, right? And, and the number of people that have lost their lives and the effect it's had on the whole world. The one thing that you might say is a positive for, for an athletic program or for a football program is, especially for a new coach, it accelerates the exposure of the guys who truly love football. And that's helped me actually, because the guys who love it found a way to be in great shape when they came back from quarantine. The guys who love it when we were doing those meetings on WebEx, you know, really got better and considerably better. So, if that's such a thing, maybe, I, I don't know if I said that very clearly, but it, it kind of accelerated the, the view I got of who people really were or are. Um, like all of us, you know, I just long for the day when it's gone, right? And that, that the tragedy stopped happening. But as we all know, you look around, it's right now it's at, it's at its a peak. So we have to do a great job in it. I've shared it and I'll share it again. You know, I tell our team every single day, our number one opponent is the coronavirus. It's not who we're playing that week because it could all, I mean, all go bye-bye, right? I mean, we, you've seen it happen so many times in, in college and pro sports and we keep fighting it. We do. Um, you got to get a little lucky too. I mean, I'm not naive to that, but we just try to keep it as tight as we can and just follow those mm -hmm. protocols as tight as we can. But most of all, we keep talking about it every single day, how, how, how important it is. And uh, it's getting more important every day, actually. A couple more questions here. Steve Politti, NJ.com. Greg, this is a good transition to the ultimate 2020 question. People, fans have noticed you're wearing the N95 mask, which is certainly an uncomfortable thing for most people to wear. What made you decide to do that? And is it hard to keep that on for three and a half hours in the sidelines? Doesn't really bother me, Steve. And my wife, you know, she got on me too. She said, bad look, you know, the, the big mass, bad look. I said, I know. 
but I kind of got used to wearing it early on. I was wearing those surgical masks and somebody, somebody gave me one of the N95s and, um, I figure if that's the safest, then why, why don't I wear it? You know, what do I care? If, it's not like I'm running sprints or anything, you know, I don't have to breathe uh, too hard. So, um, that's really the story behind it. I, I, if somebody knows that it's not the safest, let me know and I'll ditch it. But from now, from what I've heard, this is supposed to be the best one. So, we'll go to Anthony Fusilli, Rutgers Radio Network. Greg, you talked about the trick plays and the you know special teams. It's it's one thing for you and your coaching staff to call the plays, but with no off season, not a lot of training camp. What does it say about the focus of your players to execute them? Well, that's everything. Uh, Fooch and I agree, and that 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 that's where I said we have to double down on it because I actually think that's a strength of ours, our ability to focus, our ability to to work hard, right? You know, if, if people think that's you know everybody says we worked hard, well, some teams work harder than other teams. This team works hard, so if that's one of our advantages, we got to play on it, and if we can if we can put something in and really work at it and get it perfected, you know, and as a coach, you only call it if you feel good about it working, right? I, I don't hope plays into existence. We're not going to call it if I don't really believe that it's going to work. Um, so that's what I mean when I say we got to double down on fundamentals because on every one of those plays, although there's a schematic design that's unusual, you have to block and you have to catch and you have to run and you have to do all those things. That hasn't changed. Like if you don't block, you get smashed before you ever throw the ball, right? Or you don't get it up the sideline. People did their job and that's why it worked. Um, so that's really the thing that, that I would say is that's why we're doubling down in whatever we're doing on, on assignments and then, and then really on technique and fundamentals. We're going to go to Richie Schneider, right? With rivals for the last question. Hey coach. So you and Lovey Smith both, both coached DBs in the big 10 in the nineties and you were his predecessor down in Tampa Bay. So what kind of relationship do you two have? I know Lovey. I don't know him real well. Um, he probably doesn't even remember it, but when I was at the university of Miami, um, coach Dungy used to allow college staffs to come to the Buccaneers and sit and really watch practice. And then you could actually sit and listen to them in their coaches meetings. And you're talking about one of the finest defensive staffs in the history of the game, right? It was, um, Lovey was coaching on that staff. Rod Marinelli was coaching on that staff. Herm Edwards was the secondary coach, and then um, and then um, uh, Monty Kiffin was the coordinator. Now you talk about four of the best coaches that you know have ever coached defense in the league, and they were in one building. And literally, it was like in a trailer building. The old Tampa Bay building by the airport was a glorified trailer. So when you went to visit, you kind of had to stay tight to the coaches if you were going to get into the meeting room. But I can remember sitting there and just being like, this is unbelievable. I'm listening to these four talk. And, you know, Herm was always great. Herm would give you time. And I always thought Lovey, Lovey was young, young coach back then. And I sat there and said, man, I, I was envious. I looked at him. I said, this guy knows football. Like you could just see he's calm. He was very uh, kind of like almost a little like Tony, but a younger version. And um, I was so impressed watching him coach and have followed him over the years. He's done a tremendous job. Um, you know, everywhere he's been. So that's, that's what I mean. We got a huge challenge and I know, I don't know exactly how it works with all their guys that are coming off the protocols of COVID, but he's going to get a lot of his guys back. I got a feeling. And uh, you know, it's going to be the Illinois team that, that he started the year with and they're a good football team and uh, it's going to be a huge challenge. So looking forward to it, like I said, but um, it's coming fast. Thank you for the time coach. All right, guys. Thank you.